Gun. Today what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the cage system. What is the cage system? What can it do for me? And is it worth looking into? Back in a second on the garden. The, the cage system. Now there's lots of talk about the cage system. So I thought I'd take some time to review the cage system and see if it's right for you. What is the cage system? In short, the cage system is a way of visualizing the fretboard using five chord shapes that you should already know. So C, A, G, E, and D, hence caged. So taking the, if I take those five chords, but I play them across the fretboard, let's say all of them in C, for example, I'm going to have to make some bar chords. C is easy because I already just played that C. A, well, an A shaped bar chord that is C is this one. So C, A. If I come up here to my eighth fret, I have a C note here and I can form a G, a G, a G shape bar chord, but it's a bit hard to play because I don't have a don't have any fingers to go there, but that's my G shape. So there's my G. So C, A, G, E is E C shape. Sorry, E shaped C chord, and then D is right there, which takes us back to our C shape. There's the cage system C. A, G, E, D. So what's the point of all that though? Okay, so I can play a C chord all over the fretboard. Great. Gives me a few more options, I suppose. What does it actually allow me to do? The cage system actually allows you to play and visualize all of the chord tones across the entire fretboard by using those chord shapes. And for people who are visual learners like myself, it's much easier for me to kind of visualize visualize where chords are, where shapes are, rather than individual notes. So in essence, you navigate the fretboard by visualizing the chords that you play and then hitting the chord tones that you need, which is essential for melodic soloing. Is that all the cage system does? Well, I'm glad you asked, because it's not. What the cage system allows you to do is not only just visualize the fretboard, and visualize the chord tones but with each chord shape there's an associated pentatonic if we look at this this G shape here which is a C chord but in a G shape we actually have this old box one of the major pentatonic shape It also allows me to see the arpeggio because I've played it a few times. There's the C shape arpeggio that sits over that chord. And the way the cage system works is that they're building blocks. So you start with the chord, you then, you then have the arpeggio, you then have the pentatonic, you then have the major scale. And then of course you have the modes that fall on top and any extension chords and so forth. So basically these are building blocks. So just to demonstrate, at the start of this video I demonstrated a little application of the cage system. And I had a chord progression which was a B minor to A for a beat. So B minor for three beats. A uh, to D, two, three, four, back to A, two, three, four, and then G, two, three, four. 
And I could think about this by playing within a scale. Okay, so we could play this in um, B minor pentatonic or something like that. But the notes that I chose and what I played were chord tones. So let me just play it for you one more time and I'll break it down. So I've just got my progression on the looper here. A to D. Back to A. Then back to G. the pentatonic scale that sits over the top of the B minor pentatonic scale that is. So what I was doing was just a basic class, pretty standard. So sliding into the B, oops, sliding into the third of the chord, which is really a tasty note. And then I've got one beat that I'm hitting the A and I want to outline a bit of A. Okay, I don't have to because it's a passing kind of chord, but I took the opportunity to slide up into this A shape and I started hit the third of the A note again, resting on the fifth. So over the B minor. And then when I hit the A for a beat, just those two notes. And then coming to the the D, I've got this D chord right here. So I go back to the third of the A, but just slide up to the seventh, right? Which is giving me a D root note. So it's a root of the D chord. And then I'm hitting the third below it, the, the third of the D chord, okay? All right, so. All right, so kind of making the, the, those two notes ring over the D chord. And then as I'm coming back to the A chord, I'm thinking back into this chord shape because I've, I've got this pentatonic pattern right there, okay? So after I've gone to the D, so just taking those notes straight out of that pentatonic shape. And then we're going to the G. So I've got the G chord right here. So I'm sliding back down, playing the same thing again. Mostly the same thing. So over the B again. The A, then into the D, that D shape, remember, and then going to the this A shape, into this G shape. All right, so together with the backing track, into the D, back to the A. Back to the G, all right? So let's put them together. One more time. Okay, so... It's not a groundbreaking, we've just hit something better than comfortably numb. To be able to create something that's tasty and that's melodic, the note choices, to me at least, they sound good. They sound like that it follows the chords and flows with the song. That's um, a great starting point for a, uh, for a solo. The cage system can be extended. You can add 
your major sevens, your flat sevens, your suspended notes to the chords and therefore to the shape. So what you're doing is you're just building another layer on top of them. So for example, if we go back to our C example, oh, volume pop. Okay. And I wanted to play something a bit bluesy, you know, playing a, like a C7 or a C9. I know that I have this G shape C chord here and my pentatonic scale sitting above it, okay? But I also know that if I introduce an extra note, which would be the flat seventh, I can get a slightly more bluesy sound because, you know, the C7 chord has that bluesy note to it. So we want to perhaps add the flat seventh, right, to our C major pentatonic shape because it's not there. So if I have C, it's our root note here. Our normal major seventh is there, our flat seventh is there. So the scale would be... We could go down, could go down to there, but we can grab the note there. Oops, oops, I missed a note there, sorry. something with a major seven so then I know my pentatonic I'm gonna add one note the major seven system for the cage system is really for those players in my opinion who aren't visual learners who like to learn by patterns and seeing patterns and learn by building on previous knowledge building bits at a time okay for me if i was to just be bombarded with scales and bombarded with modes and bombarded with all these things I've, i find it very difficult overwhelming in fact to digest but by learning the cage system, what it's allowed me to do is to build on what I already knew. I already knew the chord shapes. I already knew them across the fretboard. But once I started to realize the, in, the, the way that they interlocked with the pentatonic and the way that the arpeggios, they all interlocked and it all became this building block. It all kind of fused together for me. So I would recommend this system for anybody that's a, more of a visual learner and would like to see patterns and shapes as opposed to just no notes. Who is the cage system not for? Well, the cage system is basically not for the people who are the opposite, the analytical people, the people who love all the chords and scales and, and they love to you know, sprout off all of the degrees of all of the chords. So there's nothing wrong with that. There's a place for that and it's important. But if that's the way that you learn, then that's, that's right for you. You might find this a bit rudimentary and you might go patterns. I don't want to see patterns. I want to know where my C sharps are and my B flats so that way I know what note I'm playing. And that's perfectly fine as well. I found for me as a player that as I've adopted the patterns, I've learned the, the notes anyway, but it brings me to my final thoughts about it. And that is 
If you listen to any melodic player, whether it be Angus Young or Dave Gilmore, Jeff Beck, Ty Tabor, these these amazing players who all play melodically, who all been able to just resonate these amazing solos that we love and we only wish we could we could try and replicate. Their choice of notes is what sets them apart, and it's the fact they follow the chords. You listen to Mark Knopfler's playing. He follows the chords. He's able to pull out those notes that resonate and sing and really create awesome, awesome melodic phrases. Now, I'm not saying for a minute that any of these guys use the cage system. They probably don't. But what I am saying is that there are a number of roads that lead to a same destination. So you might choose one path that gets you to the top of the mountain, and I might choose another path that might get me to the top of the mountain. But at the end of the day, if we both get to the top of the mountain, we, the view is just the same. So in my mind, the cage system is a great system for those people who like to visualize and like to see patterns and see shapes and like to build upon them. If you're analytical, um, it's probably not for you. Okay, But for me, it took me to another level. Thanks for joining me today on the Guitar Garden. I hope you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Garden.